Oh, let us say good day to you this day of your time. Uh, how are you all? Uh, <laughs> all right. All right, thank you. First and foremost, we will once again thank each and every one of you individually and all of you together collectively for the co-creation of this interaction and the allowance of this transmission this day of your time. Every single time you offer us an opportunity to interact with each and every one of you, it is a gift for us. So we thank you for that sharing for that gift. In this transmission, which we have titled The Seven Neutral Needs, we would like to begin this way. Now, many people on your planet have discussed with us that when they find themselves in certain circumstances, they do not necessarily know the difference between what it is they need in life and what it is that they often say that they want in life. There is a big difference between the idea of the energy of what you need and what you may want. Now sometimes, sometimes they might coincide if you get lucky. But the idea is that many times what you want might often be the product of what you've been taught to believe you need that may not actually be what you really need in life. And what you want can sometimes, because of those belief systems that might be either fear-based or negative, be something that the negative ego thinks it needs to be in control of, it needs to attract into your life in order for your life to be fulfilled. But the thing to understand is that life works automatically when you allow it to. And everything you truly need will come to you in perfect timing. It's an automatic mechanism. The idea of wanting something, we understand that the way you mean it, we understand that the way you often use it, but when you put too much emphasis behind it as being something that must happen in the way you have envisioned it happening, very often you're actually limiting yourself and limiting the way it could happen much greater than you imagine. Because the physical mind, as we have said, is limited in its way of imagining things. The higher mind, in a sense, can imagine more. So when the physical mind seeks to control and says, well, I want this, and if this doesn't happen, then something must be wrong, then you're actually closing the doors through which the higher mind could give you something better than the physical mind was capable of imagining, and thus you are actually shortchanging yourselves. But the idea also to remember is that every single thing is its own state of being. And the idea of wanting something is exactly that. It is a state of wanting. It is not a state of having. So if you insist on wanting, 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 you're going to remain in a state of wanting and you're not actually going to be able to have, to really manifest, to experience the focus of your wanting because all you're doing is saying you want it and therefore you will continue to do nothing but stay in a state of wanting it and it will never arrive. That's another reason to understand that wanting is not necessarily in your best interest. But needing is. Now the idea is that when you again find yourself in circumstances and you might find yourself being confused about what's going on and what do I really need here? to really allow myself to move forward in life, to really act on my passion to the best of my ability with no insistence on an outcome. What do I really need in life to be who I really am, to allow my life to grow, to expand in the most joyful possible way? What do I really need? So in this transmission, we have broken it down for you to the seven basic needs. Now we call them the neutral needs because these are the basic things you need to survive in your life. The idea is not so much that you have to assign a meaning to them, which is again why we call them neutral. They function automatically in a certain way by themselves, although you can certainly color them with your belief system and imbue them with different meanings and different emotions and different definitions and so forth. But by themselves, they are just the basic fundamental needs that are required for you to exist in your physical reality experience. And anytime you find yourself caught up in any kind of circumstance where you find yourself wondering, 
what kind of state of being is really most beneficial for you to be in, you can always use these seven neutral needs to go back to a ground state, back to a fundamental state, and start again from zero, start again from scratch, and recognize that in many circumstances, you really are getting what you need. And by focusing on the seven neutral needs, it can also aid and assist you in understanding the difference between what you may really need in that moment as opposed to what you are saying you want in that moment. And it can act as a clarifying system for you. Now, the seven neutral needs, shall we say, have different time frames associated to them because they are things you really do need to experience your physical reality, you will find that some of them you need all the time. Some of them can take weeks before you realize you need it. Some of them can take years before you realize you need it, but you really need them all. The idea is that without them, you will either quickly or slowly die. That's how you know they are actually fundamental needs. The ones that take years, in a sense, can seem misleading because you might feel, well, I'm still fine, I'm still breathing, I'm still moving along. And so you can fool yourself into thinking you don't need it or that you are altering it in a way that is not really in alignment with the need. But nevertheless, all we're saying is the difference between the needs that are quick and the needs that take longer is just that you either die quickly or you die slowly over time. And when we say die, we are also talking about the idea of your energy, your spirit, your willingness to live, your feeling that you belong, your feeling that you fit, your feeling that you are empowered. These things with negative beliefs can over time wither in a sense and appear to die causing you to slowly die over time when you could be living a more vibrant life a more energetic life so what are the seven neutral needs thank you we're glad you asked <laughs> in order of how long they take to kill you if you don't do them we start with you need air if you don't have air you will be dead pretty soon within a matter of minutes so that's the quickest one you need air to live in your physical reality next you need water to live in your physical reality. Without water, you will probably die in about a week. So that's a little longer. Next, now, many of you may be thinking, well, next, I need food. That's not the next thing. Next, you need sleep. You need to dream. You need to reconnect to spirit. That's what sleeping is for. That's what dreaming is about. You need to re-energize your physical battery. Without sleep, you will only last about 11 days. And then you will die. And sleep a lot longer than you intended to. <laughs> Next is food. You need food in general. Now, please understand, before we go on, of course, there are always some exceptions. There are people who are of a state where they can be breatharians and so on and so forth, and they may seem to not need food for longer periods of time. I'm not talking about the exceptions. I'm talking about the general populace on your planet. So, in general, you need sustenance of some form, or you will find in about two to three weeks you will start to die. Now, what's next? Those are the four main ones that happen pretty rapidly. Now we enter a new phase where things can take months or years. So what is next is you need some form of shelter. Now when we say shelter, 
We don't necessarily mean it has to be a building or a house. Your environment can be your shelter if it is the kind of environment in which you can thrive. So, for instance, people on your planet who might live on a tropical isle where the weather is always fine will find that that will be shelter enough. And they won't necessarily have to live in a dwelling in the classical sense. But you need some form of shelter, even if it is simply your environment that is beneficial to you. That is still a shelter, the shelter of nature, the shelter of earth that is in accord and in alignment with the human form to sustain it. Next, you need some form of connection, relationship, in some way. I understand that sometimes people may be on journeys where they seem to spend a long time alone. But that doesn't mean they're not in a relationship. The relationship doesn't have to be with other human beings. It can be with animals, it can be with trees, it can be with spirit, it can be with a rock, it can be with God, but it's a relationship. You have some sense of connection to life, connection to nature, connection to existence and spirit, connection to your essence and your being. You have a relationship with all that is in some form of expression. Without that, again, it may take years, but you will slowly die without that connection. Which brings you back to the idea of sleep, because again, that's what the sleep is for, to make that connection. Now, as we have said, on our world, we no longer eat, we no longer sleep, because we are always connected, we are always sustained just by the energy of the universe, we have evolved to that point, and eventually, you will too. But right now, again, as a generality, you will find that most of you need some form of relationship, some form of connection, some form of exchange with consciousness, some form of reflection that allows you to get in touch with the things you need to be more of who you are, the things you need to grow. This is a true need. The final need is what you might call creative expression. In other words, when you allow yourself to be who you are, it must be expressed. This is where acting on your passion falls in. This is where you express the aspect of creation that you are. You express the connections that you've made. You express the energy that has sustained you in life. So you need some form of personal, creative expression that is unique to you, that allows you to know, that allows you to shout that you are alive, that allows you to shine, that allows your spirit to be counted, to be seen, to be known, to be felt, to be understood. Those are the seven neutral needs. And again, the idea of some of the later ones, like not expressing yourself creatively, not expressing, not stating who you are in some way, shape, or form by following your passion, can take years to kill you if you're not doing it. But you will slowly be dying. Now, again, there may be moments when you go through phases where you're not doing it, that's fine, because, again, those phases may be there to teach you something. As long as you understand that one of the tools in the kit of following your passion is the reflective mirror that reveals to you anything you might be holding on to in your unconscious mind that is out of alignment with your truth, that is out of alignment with what you need, and you allow yourself to address it, then that's the point, that's the purpose of having that moment of discovering something that is not your excitement in that moment, so that you can let it go and add its energy to your overall excitement and express yourself in grander ways. The idea, therefore, paradoxically, of the reflective mirror, while you're following your excitement, revealing something to you that is not part of your excitement, is part of your excitement. To find out what doesn't excite you is part of your excitement because when something manifests in your life that might be representative of what you don't prefer, 
you can use that in a positive way by recognizing that it might be there as a clarifying point to show you what you don't prefer much more clearly so that you can see what you do prefer by contrast much more clearly. That's how to use what you don't prefer in a way that you do prefer. So again, the expression of your truth, the expression of your being by following your passion to the best you're able with no insistence on a particular outcome because you really don't know what's supposed to happen. You may think you do, but that's where you go back to the negative ego. That's where you go back to the idea that the ego thinks it has to control everything. That's where you go by the idea of wanting. I want this to happen. This has to happen. It's really got to happen or something is wrong. Something went wrong somewhere. I'm off my path. No. You cannot be off your path. You are your path. The only way you can experience as if you're off your path is by assuming that something that has happened in your life cannot possibly be there for a positive reason. Remember, remember, remember. This is what you need to remember. It doesn't matter what happens. It only matters what you do with what happens. That's the key. That's the secret. But when you find yourself in a puzzle, in a conundrum, when you feel like you have forgotten, just go back to the seven neutral needs. Let's see. I'm still breathing. I'm doing pretty good. I've got number one on the checklist checked off. <sighs> got that down pat. I need some water. Oh, all right. I might be a little thirsty, might be a little dehydrated. All right. Glug, glug, glug. Check that off your list. I need to get some sleep. I'm feeling really tired. Why am I tired? I'm exhausted because I've been trying to be someone I'm not, which is the most tiring thing you can do. <laughs> so I am now excited about resting. Rest, regenerate, connect, re-energize your batteries. Now, perhaps when you wake up, you are hungry. Get some food, put it in your body. Whatever it may be that works for you. Listen to your body consciousness. Listen to your intuition. You don't have to force yourself to be more spiritual. Yes, it's important to lighten up. But when your energy is on a higher frequency, you will automatically lose the urge to eat certain things that might have a heavier energy. There is no reason to force yourself there, which is an oxymoron and it doesn't work anyway. Listen to your body consciousness. It knows what you need and it knows what you don't need. So, pay attention to that. Then, all right, got that all checked off, those first four biggies, and now, some shelter. The idea of, are you in the environment that excites you? Because remember, when we talk about doing what excites you the most and following your passion and acting on it, it has to be a complete thing, a holistic thing. Doing what excites you, in the way it excites you, how it excites you, where it excites you, with whom it excites you, will automatically allow your synchronicity to lead you to the place that is most representative that will bring you the form of shelter or environment that you need to allow you to be who you really are and continue to grow. And also the idea of connection. It will again synchronistically bring into your life all those of whatever type of being that really is most representative of the connections you need to make in order to discover more relationship, more about yourself, more reflectivity, more information that you might need to add to your understanding of your being and your theme of exploration in this life and help you grow and expand. And then finally, yes, the expression of who and what you are. Your purpose in life is to be you as best as you possibly can. That's your purpose. The expression of your purpose will be as different as there are as many people because that's just an expression of your purpose. Your passion is the expression of your purpose. But the vibration, the frequency of your passion is who you actually are, is your frequency of existence, is your essential self. So expressing yourself, acting on your passion to the best you're able with no insistence so you don't get caught up again in that idea of wanting which isn't necessarily aligned with what you truly need. And if you can check all those off, you're doing pretty good. 
You're really doing all you need to do. You're really doing the best you can. And you can start relaxing into the idea that life works automatically. You can start allowing synchronicity to work for you in positive ways rather than negative ways. Because remember, synchronicity is always working. Always. It never stops. But there is negative synchronicity. And when you buy into negative beliefs, fear-based beliefs, then you are feeding the machine with negative energy and it can only produce negative synchronicity and allow the things to happen or not happen that will continue to perpetuate the idea of the downward spiral of negative synchronicity. But when you feed it the positive energy and stay in the positive vibratory state no matter what's going on, no matter how it looks, you are feeding the machine with the positive energy that will allow you to experience synchronicity in the positive way. This is just physics. What you put out is what you get back. Because physical reality isn't real. It's just a mirror. It's just a projection of your consciousness. So, allow yourselves to always go back to those neutral places. Allow yourself to recognize that you have what you need. And if you're going to find yourself wanting, then at least want what you need. And nothing else. Because what else do you need but what you truly need? You already come in with everything you need. It's not always manifest. You don't always see it right away because there is a timing to the unfolding and the appearance of these things. But all that timing is baked in. It's there, right here with you. You don't have to force it. It will happen in perfect timing. That's the way it's designed. That's the way it's structured. So remember, remember, Many people on your planet talk about the idea of, well, surrender to it. Surrender to the flow. And many people, because of the way you've been taught to believe things, think, oh, surrender. Well, that means I'm giving up control. No. Surrender is simply giving over to the control you already have built in. Surrender is giving up on thinking that the ego has to control everything. All the ego has to do is keep you focused in your physical experience and go along for the ride. That's all it's designed to do. That's all it needs to do. Don't burden the ego with more than it was designed to handle. Otherwise, it starts getting a little bit crotchety. And it turns into the negative ego. Oh, you want me to handle that? Oh, okay. Oh, wait, I have to have this too? Oh, all right, now I have to make that happen? Oh, I'm beginning not to like you very much. So I'm going to start playing some dirty tricks on you and I'm going to make you think that you need to have this when it's just a want. See if you like it when I overburden you with the things you've overburdened me with. Yes, the ego knows how to play that game. So let the ego do its job of simply experiencing your life, allowing you to have the focus to experience a physical reality. Because remember, that focus is all it is. It's just an imposition on yourself of a particular point of view that allows you to experience something called physical reality as if it was real. It's not. Your natural state is non-physical, so to speak. Your natural state is spirit. You never leave spirit, ever. You're just dreaming that you have left spirit. You are having a dream in spirit that you're not in spirit. That's what physical reality is. It's just a focus. In the same way that when you go to sleep and you have a dream, and it seems very real, and then you wake up and you go, oh, well, no matter how real that felt, this is who I really am. Well, no, not really. This is actually the dream. You've just gone to sleep. And when you go to sleep at night and you dream, that's when you actually have woken up because you are more of yourself in that state, more connected, more aware to your spiritual essence. That's why time doesn't make sense in dreams, because in the spirit realm, time is that malleable, that flexible. It doesn't really exist in the same way, because it's just part of your dream that it exists. Time is just a side effect of your consciousness, experiencing things in a certain way so you can have the experience you call physical reality, which is just a dream within your consciousness. Is this making some sense? All right.